Hi everyone, it's Sam, NFT Statistics, and this is your Proof Daily NFT Countdown. We're gonna talk about this new heavy metal news that came out yesterday, a bit of a teaser that we saw there. Just kind of touch on what's happening with institutions coming into Bitcoin and ETFs, and a whole lot more. Let's get right into it. Starting off with a quick market overview. Volumes basically flat, you know, unique buyers up a touch, not a whole lot of movement here. Large cap index had another uh, little bit of a weak day, a little bit of strength in pudgy penguins. Pudgy's going up to like that 4.5 range. It got down to about 4.2. Continued weakness though in doodles, uh, cool cats, clone X, world of women, and a couple others. Mid cap index was also down a small bit. Uh, a little bit of strength, I guess, in killer bears here and rumble kongs, uh, but broadly kind of weakness across a handful of projects. One thing I wanted to talk about is Izuki. Izuki has just been the project that can you know, kind of the older project, I'd say, that has consistently bucked this bear market trend, uh, you know, gone basically from, I mean, this is one of the best looking charts I have seen, especially if you remove kind of that part from last spring, last spring ever, when, when there was that Zagabon news, you know, the product, the price went down a lot, but since then, it's just been this very gradual, consistent move higher. The reason I think Azuki is important is because on Friday, they have an event in Vegas. They have talked a lot of, I mean, people have been holding off for this event. There's a potential airdrop. We don't know. They've talked about a rabbit or something like this, but this is something that people have been looking forward to for four years. It's coming up in two days. So just something to, to kind of pay attention to. What this chart looks at is the returns across a bunch of different projects. You know, Azuki, World of Women, uh, Board Ape Club, Moonbirds, since uh, the launch of the Blur token on February 13th, you can see most projects other than Pudgy Penguins are down about 50%. Some are down even more, but Azuki is actually up. Uh, so it really has bucked this trend. Obviously, D Gods and Captains have also done incredibly well. I think, though, you know, Captains is a lot newer and forces royalties, you know, whereas D Gods also a lot newer, kind of came onto the scene on, in Ethereum, middle of May. But when you're looking at some of these older projects, Azuki really has been the standout. So I'm very curious to see what happens. You know, I've always said on this show, buy the rumor, sell the news, but Azuki has had events in the past. Before the Zagabond issues last spring, Azuki had an event where after uh, the sh after their event, the, the pro that was when they dropped beans, basically the dirt that became beans, the price rallied substantially. So we have seen them deliver on events. So will be interesting to see. You know, there is a lot of leverage on Azuki right now. If you look at which projects have the most loans against them on Blend, the number one and number two projects are Azuki and Beans. Azuki's even higher now. This was from a couple days ago. Azuki last I checked was 688. Uh, NFTs on loan. So we'll be interesting to see that one. In terms of our projects, a bunch of decent sales happened yesterday. You know, one trade for a lot of different projects. Look at, let's look at some of the most uh, substantial there. You had a ringers. I think this is the first ringers uh, since the goose sale, but this sold for 40 ETH. The floor then was 42. So a little bit down from there, we had a gazers at 17.24 ETH, really seeing that floor move up nicely. Again, there were sales at 10 to 12 ETH. Uh, a couple months ago. So that's kind of moved higher, which is great to see a Meridian for 7.5. And that is another project where that floor, I believe is over eight ETH now, whereas the sales were kind of in the high fives, low sixes uh, a month or two ago. And then there's an algorithms, uh, no divisions, you know, in this lower left, I think it's the first time I've talked about this project on the show, but a five ETH sale. So that's a pretty substantial sale. Love to see that. But a bunch of these projects just got not a ton of volume, but floors do seem to be crawling a little bit higher back to where they used to be, or at least in that direction. Second story to talk about traditional finance entering crypto. I think there was a headline over the past 24 hours about an exchange that is backed by Schwab and Fidelity called EDX that is going live and they added more backers. Uh, you know, Schwab and Fidelity, of course, huge tradition titans in the traditional finance space, you know, kind of the retail brokerage houses. Uh, a little bit more about that. Uh, Schwab, Fidelity, Citadel are all investors in this exchange. They're only launching on Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. I think it's kind of funny. There was a video that went a little bit viral where Gary Gensler spoke a few years ago, I believe at MIT, I'm not sure where, but saying like that 70% of crypto is not securities. And he singled out Bitcoin, ETH, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. So perhaps uh, they saw that video and that was how they chose which coins uh, to launch. The, ha the funds will be held at custodians. Uh, and I think the goal, you know, as opposed to on the exchange itself, and I think the goal is to avoid an FTX situation where you have misappropriation of funds, where kind of the broker dealer also has the custody something like that. There are a lot of moving pieces here. Overall, just kind of interesting to see that. Now, this came on the back of last week where you had a real big piece of news that I didn't mention on the show, but I'll mention it here, that BlackRock 
uh, was launching a Bitcoin ETF. Now, BlackRock, for those of you who don't know, runs iShares. iShares is the biggest ETF provider, I believe, in the world. I believe. Pretty sure. Not entirely sure, but pretty sure. Uh, and on the back of BlackRock launching or saying they're filing for this ETF, uh, over the past couple of days, you've had Invesco as well as Wisdom Tree also file to get Bitcoin ETFs. You know, my view here is that what's happening is that BlackRock likely only applies if they know they can get it, if they know they're going to get approved. I mean, these guys are a huge institution. So once they applied, you can see Invesco, who tried to do this a couple of years ago, getting back into it, as well as a couple other, uh, you know, as well as Wisdom Tree and others. You know, I, I think. There is concern within the community of kind of these institutions that are big and a little bit against the ethos of, of Bitcoin and, and, and crypto in general. But broadly speaking, the market has responded very favorably to this. If you look at the Bitcoin chart, you can see it's gone from 25,000 uh, to 30,000 or on the, on the brink of 30,000 uh, in just a couple of days. So interesting to see how this plays out uh, and something certainly to, to keep track of. Next thing to talk about heavy metal uh launched uh they didn't launch anything they just launched a video another video talking about this game that we don't even know what's happening you know it's very hard to learn about games that you can't play yourself but uh still interesting stuff here here's the tweet from board at yacht club saying the forge you should build flex fight evolve we'll talk about that in a second that the season one begins june 29th so soon we are going to know what this is it's not just going to be talk getting the instruction book uh for a game that you don't have you know like amazon sending the instruction book before they actually send you the game. That's what we have here, but we're getting the game on June 29th. So we will see a little bit more, a little bit more about this announcement, build, flex, fight, evolve. I thought this flex word was kind of interesting. Like you build, you know, NFTs are all about flexing. That's kind of the one use case, certainly in the PFP space that I think has really kind of proven itself. And I think what they're saying here is you're going to build out your structure and then other people are going to see it. They can vote on it. Kind of an interesting word to throw in there. Fight, there's some boss or something like that and evolve. Season one again begins June 29th. Uh, they teased the building of homes with lots of different customization options. They had like a living room option with couches and TVs. They had a checkerboard, a bunch of different stuff. And then they say it'll be a leaderboard where people can go into other ones and vote based on aesthetic. I got this picture. This was taken from Board Ape Gazette. Great publication. Love that news source with regards to anything related to Yuga. Uh, but here you can see the pictures of a bunch of different samples uh, that they put in the video. Garga, you know, one of the founders also tweeted stoked to crack open Forge next week. A lot more content is coming between now and now and then. But like Dookie Dash, it will just make sense once you, you once you're playing it. You know, and I think that kind of speaks to to what I've said. You know, and these guys are good. You know, when Yuga says that they got a lot more coming, they normally got a lot more coming. So very curious to see how that all plays out. Here's a chart for heavy metal. Clearly, this has been kind of down only uh, since when since they, they launched kind of mid-March. Uh, but we got a nice little, you know, a small little bump up here. So good to see that. Last thing, let's talk about a couple notable sales. Just two art sales we're going to talk about. Nightfall by Elan Derish. Derek, love this guy for ETH. And you know, one thing that Elan does is he has figured out a way to create a signature style. And what that signature style is, is four short videos. These are all animated, really add to the ambiance. And it's really kind of set him apart. When you see something, you know immediately who it is. And I think it's really working for him. So love to see this four ETH sale. He's had a bunch of sales in that three to four ETH range. I hung out with this guy in New York. Fun dude. Always uh, love to see him uh, kind of hit the sales tape. Uh, and then one other sale for four ETH, Dioxazine Abstract by Mattia Cutini. This piece sold for four ETH. This is another animated image that you really kind of have to see as a GIF. It's kind of perplexing. It's, it's really interesting on the brain uh, to watch it. Kind of part of a, a, a three series, I guess, here. Another one has sold for four ETH. The other one is one imaginary map. It says presented by here. I'm not sure what that means, but it's yet to, it seems like it's yet to sell. Uh, I sell. I believe that. I'm not totally sure. But yeah, three kind of in this series, but also uh, has a bunch of pieces listed on other exchanges and other platforms. A little bit more about him. He says he's been observing the world with curiosity since 1979, studied electronics and worked in that sector for 10 years before inventing himself, reinventing himself as a designer, exploring visual and performance arts and realizing that his research as a matter of layers and overlapping interventions has been quite involved, it seems, in, in kind of the crypto art space. And I thought this was kind of cool. He's going to be doing a solo show with NFT Factory in Paris uh, that's coming up in November. Uh, here's a thread about it. If you if you check out his uh, Twitter, he kind of retweets this thread where you can learn more about this upcoming show. So pretty cool stuff from him. That is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell us what you think in the comments. And we'll be back tomorrow and most weekdays, most weekdays with another show. Have a great day.